This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com for your free account. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is going to be a bit of a fun show. This is a show I've wanted to do for a while. Had to find the right people under the right circumstances, and that has happened now. It's going to be a little bit of an inside baseball kind of show, and so if that's not your thing, that that's fine. But I encourage you to listen and, and give it a little thought, because we're going to talk about podcasting today. Now, at the end of the year, everybody wants you to make New Year's resolutions and all that. And I'm not really into that because that just, in my mind, sets you up for failure. But if you've been thinking about maybe you had an idea for a podcast or you'd like to see what this is all about and why and how to get into it and some of the things that you need to think about when you're, when you're thinking about doing it, um, I thought it's a good time to, to, to talk about some of that with a couple experienced podcasters who have had some changes to their podcasting recently. So with that, Kelly Gamot is here. Kelly, welcome. It's great to see you as always. Hi, it's really nice to be here. I'm excited to get to talk to you today. Yeah, this should be fun. This should be fun. And my friend, Mr. David Ginsberg. David, welcome. I am also excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'm looking forward to talk about this. Well, I, it, it's, I, 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 I kind of set you two up because I didn't give you much notice <laughs> on the topic. I just said, hey, let's, let's get together. I didn't even tell them who's going to be here, folks. So, um, But both of them, when I mentioned they've they've made changes in their podcasting lives, Kelly is an experienced podcaster, but she recently took over the Mac Observer's Daily Observations podcast. Mm -hmm. Note daily observations. That means it is a daily podcast, and that presents a whole different set of challenges. David um, was working with a co-host for a while. Now he's gone and taken his show sort of a little more solo with a a rotating series of co-hosts. Um, a little more like uh, Mike LaPont's old model used to be. So, I, and then of course, my show is one where it's me primarily talking to one, two, or three guests about whatever their their issue or their thing is. Um, so we have three very different kinds of shows here, and I thought it'd be interesting just to compare a few notes. But Kelly, let's let's go with you. Give us a quick history of your involvement with podcasting. Gosh, um, my involvement goes back to uh, when Lost was on the air, the TV show Lost. And uh, I was friends with someone who had a Lost podcast that they put out. And um, they posted publicly that they were looking for research interns, like people who hang out on message boards and have theories. And and they were like, there's only two of us and we can't cover all the ground. So we want other people to sort of help us and contribute to the show. and so. Uh, I started, I volunteered. I, like I said, I'm acquainted with them. So I volunteered and then um, it evolved from, we were on a mailing list and we would sort of share notes like via email to uh, we would record ourselves. And so I would record myself talking about like, here's the thing I want to know. Here's what I'm curious about. Did you see what just happened tonight with the plane and the, and the, the flash sideways and whatever it was. And then I would talk about that and it was just me and my, my, my headset and I would sit down and I would record that and send it off to them, you know, an MP3. And then they would play that as part of the show. And they were like, well, here's what Kelly said that I thought was right. And here's what was wrong. And here's like, that makes me think of this other thing. And let's show. So like the other people were also recording their thoughts and sending them in as well. The other people that were contributing. So that was how I got started. And then not too long after that, I started doing the Two A Talk cast with Mike Rose. Um, he would host the show. He was like the primary, the anchor. And then um, I would show up and help talk to him about the news of the week or whatever it was because you could never tell who all was going to be there. So it was nice to have somebody reliably so you didn't just talk to yourself all night. And then um, at one point he ended up going out of town and said, would you like to host? And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And he's like, yeah, actually you do. So uh, give it a shot and let's see what happens. And uh, that was how I officially ended up hosting a show. And then after a while it became Mike sort of going, going from like, I won't be available in a place with internet access. Can you host the show to I just don't feel like doing it tonight. Can you host too? How about you're just the host and then when you can't do it, let me know. And so eventually it sort of became my show and then I would go ask other people to come on the show and I got 
<coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I got a lot of people to come on the show and sit and talk to me about all kinds of things. Like I got to talk to Jim Dalrymple and Andy Anatko and Renee Ritchie and all of those people years and years ago, which in internet time is like ages of civilization now, <laughs> like we've been through since I actually got to sit and talk to them on Sunday nights. Um, from there, um, I've done my own show and uh, I was a regular guest on uh, Daily Observations, the Mac Observer's Daily Observations podcast. I would show up one day a week. And then um, when Jeff, who was the host of the show, when Jeff changed over and uh, left Mac Observer, they needed a host. And uh, everyone who is still at Mac Observer and Jeff all told me, you were the first person we thought of who would be the person that we would want to do this now that Jeff is gone. So and Jeff said you were the first person I picked as well. So oh. now I do that show every. So now I do that show five days a week. Very cool. Very cool. One thing that you one advantage I think you have, Kelly, with uh, daily observations is that you sort of have a closed panel of yeah. the folks from the Mac Observer. Mm -hmm. And that that you automatically have one problem solved that plagued David and I both, and that is not just getting the guests. Usually, getting guests is not that big a deal. It's scheduling the guests mm -hmm. problem because people say, "Yeah, I'd love to do right. it, but I can't do it tonight, and I can't do it next week, and I can do it next Thursday." Well, no, I can't do it Thursday, so mm -hmm. pretty soon you're you're a month or a month and a half out, or you yeah. just say, "Hey, I'll just I'll tr I'll, ca I'll call you again and try." So mm -hmm. you automatically have one problem solved. But yes. Okay. And so also content because like daily, we sort of talk about like something that comes out of the morning editorial meeting that Mac Observer has every weekday. So uh, this podcast spun out of that meeting and having a lot of, well, you know, you wrote that up and I was wondering what if it's because this other thing is happening? Oh, you know, I didn't think about that. So instead of just having that conversation ourselves, like we just move it over to uh, Discord and I hit record and then we're off to the races. And that was, that was really how that show came to be. And um, it's been a lot of fun to do. So like I have most of the mechanics of putting a show together solved. You're right about that. Um, and then other shows, it sort of depends. Like I also have, a, I currently uh, we're on hiatus because we're getting ready to spin it up in the new year. Uh, my Westworld podcast uh, that I do with Don Melton. Hi, Don. Um, <laughs> they that show is also sort of constrained. Like I have a co-host, and uh, we already know what we're going to talk about. And you know, we well, we know where we're going to start, where it leads. By the time we get to the end of the show, we have no idea. But uh, like, it's another one where the content is sort of pretty straightforward. So, uh, for the most part, the the trouble I have with like the, not the trouble necessarily, but the, the work and the effort that I have to put in and the mileage that I have to put in to create a show is all on the back end for the most part, because the front end is all taken care of. Yeah. That was the other thing too, that you, you can respond very quickly to topics of the day. Um, and if there are topics of the day, then you can kind of dig into something else. But, um, and that's something that is a challenge for me. And I, and I, and I think for David too, because we yeah. are on a little bit different schedule. And mm -hmm. Unless I just want to pop up and say, you know, Hey, this is what I think of this issue. And I'm not sure that people really care that much about what I think about any issue. It's, I think it's it always works better as a discussion for me. You have that built in. So yeah. It's great. So, David, you your change recently yeah. was that you went from, as I said, having a regular co-host to saying, okay, I'm going to change that and I'm now going to have a rotating series of co-hosts. Right. Um, and, and so I will ask you the same question. How did you get into podcasting and why? Well, uh, like I think – as you know, I, mean, I, I, I started, I mean, I kind of, kind of dabbling doing this stuff for many years. And then Mac Stock 2015 came along the first year, um, met Mike Potter and, and uh, he asked me to speak. And I, I had been doing that for many years as far as a speaker goes, uh, you know, doing it at work and others. And always has been a lot of fun to do that. Um, and then I decided to speak. And then, of course, you know, Mac Stock 2015 was, a, was an eight-week uh, uh thing to create. I mean, it was, it was so short of a time to get things going. So didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I met Mike and we said, let's do it. And I, and since I live in Chicago and, and that's where Max Ducks located. So you're like, Hey, what the heck? Let's do it. So 
got up on stage, did my thing. And then, then I start walking up into the, uh, when we had, if you remember correctly, we had our, our meeting where we were at the, uh, up on stage in front of the whole audience of all the speakers and saying, well, let's have interviews with everybody. And I'm standing up here. I'm saying, wait a minute, these are all podcasters. I feel like really out of place. What am I <laughs> doing here? I'm not, I, I'm not a podcaster. Well, maybe I am. I didn't, I didn't think of it at the time. So, so I'm sitting up there and I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh wow, this this is pretty cool because I and, and I, a lot of the folks I hadn't been uh, very active listening to, you know, like Dave Hamilton and Guy Cyril and and you of course and Allison and I was like, wow, this is this is this is great. I want I want to be part of this and you know, but again, I'm still getting to know all of you and and, and that you don't just want to just dive in and uh, try to get, be part of the of the Apple community. So. Uh, and then, of course, you're, I still think the thing you said to me at the, the on stage when uh, you said, uh, "Well, what are you doing next Tuesday?" Because I'm going to come on your show, and uh, the rest is history. It's uh, I, I I started up uh, in touch with iOS, and, uh, and you're right. It was it was a it was, we started as a co-host, and and I I kind of had a, a feel that I wanted to do something more than just the every week. Um, I wanted to keep the show every week because it's. If you don't do podcasts every week, it gets stale and people are going to stop listening. And then I don't want that to. Ha- I didn't want that to happen. So there were a lot of scheduling conflicts, and a lot of times we go a couple of weeks without me doing it. So and I, and I started thinking about doing a different the, the time that Mike Laplante and you mentioned him at the beginning of the show uh, invited me to be on his show as a as a rotating uh, co-host, in which I was thrilled and and we had a blast. Mike and I. And Mike's a great guy, um, and I had him on my show just recently too. Um, so as he, as I watched him do that, I said, God, I really like this. I like this concept because I like to, to, to just have different personalities. Of course, both of you have been on my show, so we, and, you, know, you will again. And, uh, we, uh, I, I enjoyed doing that. So I just, it was hard because the co-host that I had was, you know, I didn't want to uh, hurt her feelings, but it, it just, it was just time. I wanted to take the show in a different direction. I mean, I had started the show and I'm, you know, I, all the costs involved and all that. And I, again, I, I, but. It was it was it was just more of a, a difficult decision to say okay I gotta make take this different because I, I want to have rotating hosts and then I in fact I even had a a, a guest with uh, with one of my coworkers who works in our Dallas off, office from who I work for and he uh, he came on so we did it during the Jam conference so so I mean I started doing this like God this is this is a lot of fun I want I want I want it, and I want to have different. Uh, uh, different uh, opinions of everything relates to iOS. So, um, and, and and I did that. So that's really how I got into it. And then this this just uh, we just started this recently. So I've had at least four, six, or seven um, or co-hosts. And I'm going to try to keep it like 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 what Mike did. I'm I, I, his concept with a rotating uh, uh, mm-hmm. going to rotate hosts. So and including you guys, of course. Um, so that's really how I got started with it all. But you didn't, much like Kelly, though, you didn't just stop with uh, a Mac slash Apple iOS podcast. You decided to do something completely different as another, as a different podcast. Oh, oh yeah. I'll forget. Oh, I guess I should talk about that one, too. I am. <laughs> and that counts as a podcast, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm a, friend of my, a friend of mine and I uh, do another podcast called Off the Charts Horse Racing. And, uh, we just kind of stumbled it by accident. Him and I were have been good friends for you know thirty years, and um, he's a very good horse racing handicapper. I'm I'm kind of a good personality and, and the technology piece of the of the operation. So we just we sat down and, I, and we got on Skype, and I just because uh, I, I after we I started in touch with iOS, and I said, yeah, let's check it out, let's try it. So we recorded the show, and and he did his picks, and and uh, it just kept evolving. And we've already done sixty seven episodes now at this point. And uh, wow. in fact, yesterday uh, we had a very good day. He had, had some good picks, made made some good money. So on the wow. on the horses on the horses. So uh, last two weeks we've had very good success. So uh, yeah, so that that's gone uh, that's gone very well. I mean, averaging three to four hundred downloads a week for for just two guys sitting around talking about the different things that relates to horse racing. It's not technology. So, uh, but we're, we're at a point now with the show, he, he's starting to fit, think we got, you know, monetizing all that other stuff is, is gotta, gotta start happening soon because, uh, as much as he, in, we and I, him and I enjoy it. It's just, it takes a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of effort for what he has to do each week. Cause he has to handicap, you know, anywhere between four and six races. Uh, and that takes a lot, takes a lot of time takes a lot of time and then plus you know getting value of what he's the information he's providing because uh 
his his what they call it, ROI, a return on investment of all the picks that occur, is like forty four percent. So you know you wow. got to think that way too. So mm-hmm. uh, where, where are we at? So we started Patreon and we're tr- we're trying it, and he's already see he's not a technology guy. I know what Patreon and I know what the patience is with podcasting. <laughs> Whereas he's getting a little more impatient, but and I don't blame him. But uh, uh, but we're we're gonna see where it goes, you know, as far as that goes. So, uh, but I gotta keep talking to him to say, hey, this is. I'm sure I'll be seeing this, so <laughs> be careful. I don't want to say too much of anything bad, but uh, it's it's just yeah, we have to uh, we have to to see how it goes. I mean, as you both know, podcasting you just you don't make money right away. It takes time, a lot of time. And I'm new, and I'm new, and it's compared to both of you guys because uh, you know I'm only doing this like what two or three years, so um, or you guys a lot more more years off. So I got a lot of catching up to do, but uh, but I think I've I've done a good start. I can't complain. But you well, said a couple of things I wanted to yeah. talk about because they were both technology, and I think both of them are things that don't always get considered when people talk about podcasting. So, like, I've made this joke before that, like, the world doesn't need another podcast that's two dudes sitting around complaining about their phones. <laughs> that's right. Like, There's plenty of those. But, yeah. Right. Like, that's kind of covered. So, unless you have an interesting yeah. angle on that, like, maybe not. So, the two things that you said about technology that I thought were interesting were, first of all, um, it doesn't need to be a technology podcast. And right. your, your horse one, your horse racing one is is a prime example of that. And the second one is that, in the horse racing podcast, you are the technology piece and there's someone else right. who's doing like the bulk of the content of that show. And I think sometimes people feel a little, <clears throat> I mean, it gets easier all the time, but sometimes people feel a little intimidated or a little um, like, I don't even, like, I don't even know what I don't know. Right. And, you know, trying to get started and maybe it's good to team up with somebody who can help you with that other piece or um, somebody who has spent the time or is is a little more familiar with that than maybe you are. Right. And so that the show that you want to do can become a reality. Because I always encourage people, you know, people like, gosh, I wish I could do that. And I'm like, you can. Like, I know, I just saw you put your iPhone in your pocket. I know you can record a podcast and release it because you have an iPhone and that's all right. you Like, if you want to up your game, add headphones. Like, you know, and like you can start there. Nobody's listening to a podcast for production value if the content of the podcast is really boring or really uninteresting or the hosts are no fun. Nobody's oh, listening yeah. and going, but the production value. No, nobody's yeah. doing that. It's a podcast. And, <laughs> right. You know and I mean? people will, will cut oh, you slack. Chuck's exception. But <laughs> for a little, well, people will cut you slack for a little less production value if you have something interesting to say, if you have an interesting way to say it. Or, you know, if there's, if it's, you know, if you're on a topic that like not a lot of people are on and you're, you're really interested and enthusiastic about it, that comes through much more clearly than obviously you didn't do a good job editing this or whatever. Like people are more willing to forgive that than a boring podcast. I mean, and you really hit, you really hit the nail on the head about that in both my experiences. Um, You, you, you want the content to be interesting, you know? The horse racing we don't want to just sit there okay we're doing our picks today here you go and then he just goes through the picks and i'm trying to i'm trying to become make that more and more uh, prevalent by at the beginning of the show i'll mention a news story just like this last past episode we mentioned uh and it, involved, it actually involved the technology now that i think about it um there was a news story about uh they're going to start using gps at ho- at racetracks to do the do the clocking because if you don't if you know oh, wow you know, horse racing, when they have you know, all those guys had three, four, they always have three or four stopwatches around their necks and they're timing each horse. And it's usually like trainers. Well, now you have uh, the, the, the company's going to, uh, they've already installed a number of tracks. Uh, they're going to install GPS units and they're going to time the, the warm ups, what they do for training uh, that way instead. So uh, I think it was kind wow. of like a, a culture shock to the horse racing industry because. I can tell you by by seeing all the horse racing podcasts that are out there right now, they're they're not that exciting. <laughs> and and <laughs> other than some of the ones that are the bigger ones, like the bigger companies that you know do yeah. you know like like uh, the Daily Racing Forum, a lot of those folks, th- that's what their business is. But still, mm-hmm. they don't understand technology. I mean, just like I mean, horse racing is becoming more um, more of a technology type business because you have a lot of these uh, companies uh, that do online betting. And that's how I place my bets is I use an mm-hmm. online service. They just updated their site uh, yesterday and both my friend and I were sitting at the, uh, the off track betting place uh, and said, God, this twin spires is the name of the company. They, just, they totally changed their site. So, and 
we're all creatures of habit. So he was trying to like, where do you go to do this? Oh, we do. Do this? Yeah. So that could be something I might talk about next week, you know, and during our show, just mm-hmm. kind of spinning it in technology. Cause you're always going to, there's always going to be a place to talk about technology regardless of what the topic is. And the same thing happened in, with, uh, with in touch with iOS. It just, there was a lot of times there were topics that just were just kept going on and on. And I, I and, and again, I wanted to change, I wanted to make a change to, so, and people could tell as I talk is I, each guest is interesting. And I know Chuck appreciates that too, because he has guests on all the time. That's what makes the, that, I think that's what makes it the, the, the podcast interesting. Same thing with the, 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 your, your show, Kelly, is it's, you have, you're, you're rotating your, 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 your guests with uh, the, the staff of the Mac Observer. So mm-hmm. I think that's in itself. I've learned a lot when it comes to both my podcasts. Yep. So Kelly, I wanted to, well, one thing before we, before I do that, um, I want to, one topic we're going to stay away from is monetization um, mm-hmm. simply because okay. there, are too, there are too many options and yep. there's so many things. The one thing that I think you can, it's safe to say is nobody is, is getting rich podcasting. No. So if, if you have visions, I mean, mm-hmm. and David's saying he's only in it two years and I've been in it a lot longer. And I can tell you now that if you cover your expenses and can buy a couple burgers, you're doing good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, that's, and that's and that's really what I was looking for. And yeah. as far as my, my podcast goes, um, right? Again, because because the horse racing one involves gambling and it involves you know making people money. That that so you, it, it's a little different, but I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So I mean, so the thing is, it, as we're encouraging people to maybe consider a podcast, please don't think that it's it's going to you know put a whole, no. whole lot of change in your pocket. It's just if it does, great. Call all three of us and let us know how. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Um, there's very few. I will have you on few. my podcast to talk about how to make money on yeah. my podcast. <laughs> That's right. Kelly, though you said that you only you have an iPhone. And so I agree with you to a point, although I do think that the the podcasting world has changed a little bit, that there is not necessarily production value as in intro, outro, you know, all mm-hmm. that stuff. But you have to have something that sounds good. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you have something that doesn't sound good, it needs to be the exception rather right. than the rule for your show. Right. But you have to start. And, like, and I think that's where a lot of people get hung up is, you know, particularly like you watch a lot of video shows and a lot of people like I have my microphone in the shot and, you, you know, and people see like enough road podcasters and they go look and go, I can't afford hundreds of dollars on a microphone. so nothing and you know so i'm not going to even start and you know you can't like you can't let that be the thing that hangs you up agreed agreed, agreed. and i think that's where a lot of people get started cuz you never get to like the show that's like really well produced and tightly edited and moves right along and has like intro music outro music whatever you've got like you never get there if you don't start with hi this is the first episode of the thing we're going to talk about and here it is and we're going to find a clever title for it later but right now like here's me and here's my friend and we're going to talk about knitting whatever um you know and and if that's awesome i will i will probably listen to your knitting podcast (laughs) um but you know i want or you know whatever it is like you have to get started so that then you can listen to it yourself and you know lots of this is another big podcasting secret that i'm going to just tell everybody so uh here we go uh lots of people record episodes that never get released because you're not obligated so you record it and especially like if you have an idea you want to work it out like let's sit down and hash that out and see how it works see how it sounds see what it's like to edit a show that short, that long, um, get a feel for what the production of that particular piece looks like. Is it an hour show? Is it a half hour show? What, you know, how do you want that to actually end up and then go, yeah, you know what? Like I listened to the whole thing and we don't need to spend an hour on that. Like this needs to be a 30 minute show. So maybe you set up a timer and you record another episode and go, yeah, half an hour. We moved it right along. Everything was great. That was much better. I have like, you know, a little clip art piece of music or, you know, I play the ukulele. I can go play a few chords and now we have a theme song and there it is. Whatever. Like, but you have to get that first thing out the door so that then you can figure out how it evolves into the thing that you actually want it to be. 
So I encourage everybody to get started. And yeah, your first episode, you're going to go back and be embarrassed of later. I guarantee it. <laughs> I, I was at both of them. It's funny just to listen back. I mean, both of my podcasts, the horse racing, I keep it at, we try to keep it at 30 minutes. I mean, there's mm-hmm. times I've done it for 20 minutes and it just didn't go that far. Mm-hmm. In touch with iOS, I like to do it an hour, but you know, I may dabble in shorting, shortening it a little bit if, if I can come under mm-hmm. 40, 50 minutes. And that's what... And Chuck does the same thing. His, some of his shows are 30, 20, 30 minutes. Some are hour, hour and 10. So mm-hmm. that's what's great about podcasting. You don't have to, you don't have to live in that world of uh, or production like you're on a network TV where you have to be done and set time. Yeah. Well, and, and that goes back to the early days of podcasting when it was supposed to be almost anti-big media. And there are things about big media that have slid in. And I I personally have resisted some of that because I feel like if we have a topic that needs to be talked about for 50 minutes, then we'll talk about it for 50 minutes. That's one reason. Yeah, that's one reason I started Mac Voices is what was out there at the time. First of all, there wasn't a lot of it. But more importantly, they'd have somebody on for a five-minute segment. It's like, no, I want to hear more like an hour and a half of this person. They're very interesting. Mm-hmm. Right. So Mac voices has always been. As look, long as talk, it is. Yeah. It's if, if we can cover it in 20 minutes, <laughs> then great. And if yeah. we can cover yeah. it in an hour and 20 minutes, that's fine too. You know, it, it, mm-hmm. it because that's, that's the kind of show I want to listen to. And so that's mm-hmm. the kind of show I produce. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I've, been a listener, a viewer of your show for many years. And I like that of you because you have such a variety uh, of that. And I'll go right back just to equipment for, for a minute. Um, I mean, when I first started, I didn't have them. I mean, I spent like 30 or $40 for the mic I'm talking to you on right now is a 30 or $40 mic, a $50 mic, a mm-hmm. you know, Audio Technica AT2100, whatever it is. So I, I, and I plugged it into my computer. I mean, that's all you need. You need a microphone and a computer and you're done and just plug in yeah. and go. I and spent, uh, the first at least five years, I think, that I was doing any sort of podcasting using the Logitech USB gaming headset yeah. for notebooks. And the go. reason it was for notebooks is because it folded over into a little hard shell box. So like most of the time, it didn't even live on my desk. It was just a USB gaming headset for like 40 bucks off Amazon. It had the best review right. of what I wanted at the time when I was like, I need to actually get a microphone in some way in order to do this and then did that. And I spent $40 on it and I got compliments on that thing all Hmm. forever until I moved to something else. And, you know, if you have a gaming headset, like that will work, you know, Um, anything that you can do so that you're not using the built-in speakers and the built-in microphone on your laptop is, or on your phone. Or your earbuds. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, but, you know, if, if you're stuck somewhere and I know like everybody probably ended up doing this at one point, like, hi, I'm on my iPhone pack in headphones. I apologize in advance for the quality, but at least we can talk, you know, and then yeah. and it always know, sounds okay from there. Yeah. That's okay. Right. But yeah. yeah, you can spend, you don't have to spend loads and loads of cash in order to get something that will oh, work but, really well for you. And loads of stuff just pokes into the side of your computer and you can call it good or even your iPad or your iPhone now. But then when you get into the podcasting, you start getting really obsessed of wanting to have better quality. So then you spend more money at stuff and we all kind of test oh, it. Yeah. I mean, I bought the yes, Zoom yes. 6 little the little box that I'm talking through right now with you. And I love it because it, I can I can use it as a recorder and I can also use it as an interface to plug into my into my uh, computer to, to control it a lot more than I can by just plugging directly in. So, And in case you want evidence of that, I'm going to ask David a bunch of questions about that after the show because I'm very interested yes. in one of those. Yes. <laughs> we can talk. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. If you visit OpsGenie.com right now, you can sign up for a free account and then add up to five team members for free. Why would you want to do that? Because incidents occur, no matter how hard you try to prevent them. Sometimes they happen because of something you did, or something you didn't do. Or maybe you had nothing to do with it. The bottom line is that your service is disrupted, your customers aren't being served, and you need to get it taken care of as soon as possible. And that's where OpsGenie comes in. With OpsGenie, your dev and ops teams get notified of the problem quickly. But in a global 24-7, 365, everyone always on the go world, that's not enough. The right people need to be notified. 
The team in Sydney may be winding down while the team in Paris is just getting started. Or the critical team member in London may be on vacation. And let's not forget weekends. OpsGenie takes care of that by making sure that, through a series of smart scheduling options, the team that is awake and on the job is alerted. And if they can't fix the problem quickly, OpsGenie can quickly escalate the problem so more resources can be brought to bear. Your customers don't want interruptions. You don't want interruptions. When you and your team are armed with OpsGenie, issues are addressed faster and more efficiently. And that's exactly what it takes to meet today's business expectations. OpsGenie by Atlassian at OpsGenie.com. Sign up for your free account with your five team members now and find out what it can do for you. With OpsGenie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Thanks to OpsGenie for their support of Mac Voices. But Kelly, you said something interesting too that I think is really important. You're honest with the audience. Now, things happen behind the scenes and sometimes, you know, you might have the wrong input set and you don't know it right. because of the way that your setup is and you get you, so you end up recording through a different mic and it sounds, mm -hmm. okay, that, that just happens and there's not much you can do about it. But if, if you are away from home and you forgot to pack a mic and you're using it, yeah, just, Hey, say to the audience, look, this is what happened. And this is why I sound this mm -hmm. way. It'll be back to normal right. you know, when I get home and the audience mm -hmm super forgiving about that kind of thing, yeah. but, you, but it also helps to kind of let them know that you know that, that you've taken a step back. Right. And, and then trust me, trust me, I, 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 people, I've already seen some comments in iTunes, doing the iTunes, you know, the iTunes comments. And one person said, my, I, my mic was too soft. I wasn't, I wasn't talking loud enough. Um, you know, and one thing too, you learn as you podcast, you want to talk a little louder than not mm -hmm. super loud, but enough that, that it, that it sounds good. I mean, they're t I, yeah. I can be very soft spoken. I talk, you know, I, I'm very, I, I, I've learned from doing as many po podcasts as I have that I, uh, that I do that. So it, it mm -hmm. and also, you know, you got to make sure the way the volume's set and, and I, and then being friends with guys, Cyril doesn't always help either because I'm <laughs> always playing or I, I, and I, he starts playing around with stuff. I said, I can't do this anymore. I have to, and not, I love guy. Don't worry. Don't, don't, I'm uh, sorry, guy. I'm not, I'm not knocking you, buddy, but, uh, uh, it, it's just, yeah, you can't start playing around with stuff. I mean, it, and, now, and also gets expensive. You start buying all these other yeah. different things and hookups and, and I've really, I've really decided myself on this, this, uh, this little guy that I'm plugged into. I mean, I, I actually bought a, a mixer. I wanted a Behringer mixer. The, that the guy sold me it was an old one, but it works, and I wanted to play with it just, just more so to get to learning how how sound is and mixing and that kind of stuff. That's more of a playing around thing, and I didn't spend a lot of money on it. So, yeah, uh, and nor have I really played with it much. So I need to do well, <laughs> a little more. But the thing is that it's really large; it takes up a lot of space on your desk. Yeah. And so, like I said, that yeah, just don't don't let that bother you when you're yeah. podcasting. Just 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 go with this simple mic, like like these. I say you can buy them really cheap, and mm -hmm. that's where you get started. Yeah. And you can find compatible mics too. Like I have found um, mm. people who sound, people sound different on different microphones. Right. So I have managed to luck into what apparently, according to feedback, I get. <laughs> um, you got the blue. Is, is a pretty optimal mic for, for my voice, where I resonate, what I sound like, the quality yeah. of my voice, where it originates my body, all that. Like there's a load of stuff that goes into what people sound like. And then finding the microphone that works very well with that. Like I know people who have, test it out like three or four different microphones and you can tell because all of it like when you have them to compare like somebody's like yeah i'm trying this new microphone wow i can you know i can really tell like you, like it really is working for you and and sometimes it's just a matter of you know uh this 40 dollar microphone is much happier with my voice than this other 40 dollar microphone and you know if you get an opportunity right. to try them out try them out and and see where you end up because you know again you don't have to spend a ton of cash no, no. But two things there. First of all, um, the four the four hundred hour microphone may not necessarily sound any better than the forty hour microphone for your voice, and right. also because this is podcasting, because the audio is going to get processed and compressed for downloading. So don't get suckered into necessarily right. buying, you know, the the super expensive microphone. At least not to get started. It, you just probably don't need it. Yeah. Road and Heil, the two big, yeah. the two big expensive ones. Right. And to David's point, 
um, you know, if if you're starting and and uh, well, uh, to Kelly's point, you can start with just an iPhone or your your earphones, so your, mm-hmm. your 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 AirPods or your AirPods, but you can also just spend a little bit of money and get something um, like the the Blue Yeti that plugs mm-hmm. into the USB port on your Mac, and that's it. There's nothing else. There are no mixers. There's no anything. Mm-hmm. No, you play with the settings on that, and I do mean play because there are only like four settings and then volume setting to see what sounds best for you, mm-hmm. and then go. That's and it. And you can record with QuickTime, which yeah. comes free with your computer. Yep. You can record with um, other Audacity. things that are also really inexpensive. Audacity, you can record with Audacity. Mm-hmm. Um, I've spent a lot of years fighting with Audacity, so I always forget it's, that it's an option yeah. <laughs> for people. Uh, we don't speak the same language, Audacity and me. We'll talk about that later. I'm sure we'll get into some tools. Yeah. But um, oh. like, there's a lot of ways to get going and not have it be you know, a ton of cash, especially like if you just want to get started and see if you like it. Like, Is this even fun? Is this what I even like doing? Yeah. GarageBand is another one. I use GarageBand. So. Yeah, also comes with your computer. Yeah, right, That's free. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I will mention that I've been using um, to to sweeten the audio a little bit, to make it sound a little better, and especially for like a group interview with this. Um, now, keep in mind that I do an, a video show, but there right. is an audio track to the video show, obviously, but it also gets released as an audio-only podcast. So I want to have the levels and everything as as even as I can. So there are there are services you can use and software you can use um, to process the the final uh, audio file and mm-hmm. improve some of those things. Um, right now I'm using Auphonic at uh, and and I find it to to really improve things because hmm. the the one thing it's it's one thing if you are doing your own podcast or if you and your partner are doing a podcast, you can play with things and get mm-hmm. them leveled out. I'm having constantly different people on all the time. And sometimes they can be on really great microphones or really, or, or really terrible microphones, or they might not have a microphone at all. They just may be talking to their computer and using the mic in, in, the, in their Mac or in some extreme cases, even their iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so those services really can make a difference. Yeah, they can cost you a little money. Alphonic uh, is a subscription service, or you mm-hmm. can pay a little more money and download their utility. Um, mm-hmm. But if, if once you decide on this and you want to step up your game, again, depending on the kind of show you're doing, it's, it's something to think about. Yeah, Alphonic does offer a certain amount a month for free, I think. Yes, two hours so, for free. Yeah. So yeah. you're right. So you so, can always try like an episode and see how, you, you know, feed Alphonic an episode for free and see how you feel about what it did for you. Yeah. And, so. and if you're doing, you know, I mean, I guess theoretically, if you're doing four 30 minute shows a month, then you, you can do it for free. And mm-hmm. that's great. You know, I, I seriously doubt that that's going to be the case because you're going to get into it more and more. But, <laughs> um, the, oh, hello, Siri. Um, <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to, to ask you all is what you do, because the, to, in order to do podcasting, you have to then deliver the files in a podcast feed. So the two questions I have for you. Where do you host your files, meaning where do they live as t- to be downloaded? And then how do you create that podcast feed or the RSS feed? Um, and, if, and sorry, folks, if we're doing a little jargon, but um, what is it? Really simple syndication, RSS, RSS. Mm-hmm. is the way that if when you go to iTunes and subscribe to a show, that's the technology behind it that says, okay, I want to listen to um, Kelly's Westworld podcast and therefore, I subscribe to it, and now every time she releases a show, it comes down. Mm-hmm. Um, so, David, where do you host your uh, your files? Well, I have two places I host it. I actually in touch with in touch with iOS. I use Libsyn. Libsyn is probably one of the more popular uh, services, um, and uh, they also host uh, my website for now. I want but I've been trying to. Uh, I just got uh, five years of ho- web hosting for really cheap, so I want to get my uh, website pushed, uh, moved over, because I want to get um, uh, SSL enabled on my URL too. That's a whole other topic, but anyway, yeah, that's they. I'm paying like the fifteen dollar plan a month with Lipson, and they give me I think something like a hundred or two hundred megabytes of space per month. I never run out of space, so they 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 take that part of it, and I lo- upload the file there. That's where I put all my text and information and how it, and how it uploads to my website. So that that uh, uh, that's how I handle that. Uh, the RSS feed is through them as well. 
Uh, and then you also have to remember, before I mention my other podcast, what I do is uh, you have to submit your podcast to, to, to iTunes and you have to use the Podcast Connect uh, uh, service. And so you have to have your RSS feed in place first and then you send that to uh, iTunes because trust me guys you got you have to be on itunes there's in the podcast uh, apple podcast that's yeah. where all your traffic is going to go um i mean both both my podcasts are and i'm sure here's too uh, kelly it's 50 60 percent is coming from the, that feed so you got to do that um the horse racing podcast i use another service called Simplecast, and actually this service is actually a lot simpler to, st- to start off with i think than lipson lipson's a little more advanced uh, but Simplecast just lets you set things up. You can set up a, a simple website and uh, and go. And they, they put the RSS feed there. They have a place where you can go to, um, uh, you can look at uh, your stats. I, I go there every day and look at the stats and I get immediate information with charts and everything telling me who's listening. And in fact, it breaks it down even to where they're listening all over the world. The Off the Charts uh, podcast, I mean, I think I, I, I think Japan is our, our third largest audience compared to the U.S. and and I, I forgot who the, the, the second uh, country was, but yeah, it's like Japan and Australia and the United Kingdom. And we're getting, I mean, we're getting listens, listeners all over the world. I mean, it's wow. small, it's small amounts, but they're interested. I, mean, I think Ireland was a place and England. Those are, and I'm not surprised because those are, those are, those are countries that people are very into horse racing. And, and, and that's why I, I, I see that. Lipson, at least I haven't seen it yet as far as all the, how it breaks it down. It doesn't give you an exact spot of where people are listening but they still have good stats and, and that's why you want these services you want them not only to host your uh, your your uh, your sound uh, bites and your sound of your show uh but they give you other things so you're getting a pretty good bang for your buck and i don't think in between 12 and 15 dollars a month is not terribly expensive for hosting for that but you have to have that service you don't have to have web hosting but i recommend it because uh, and i'm sure uh, chuck can attest to that because his host his website's hosted to someplace also so it's mac observer so Right, um, Kelly. How about how about you? I know, well for TDO and for uh, some of your other projects. Yeah, so um, I told you I have a bunch of podcasts. Uh, Mike yeah. Rose and I. Uh, the minute the two talk cast ended, uh, like literally in my inbox, we got the email from that that as things were spinning down at Tua that all of the shows were going to be ending you know, in this particular date. So that email went out to us. And then the next email after that was from Mike Rose and it said, want to start a podcast? And so we sort of do fits and starts. The whole thing is, is at this point, almost a lesson in what not to do. Cause like we're really good about episodes for about three months and then we don't do any for a while. And we keep trying to get back together and keep missing each other. So um, all of the scheduling stuff that we've talked about before is stuff that totally happens to Mike and I all the time. So um for that show, I know Mike hosts that at Simplecast. That's a Simplecast oh, um, cool. thing that that lives there. And then um, uh, Mac Observer is all um, hosted. It gets uh, what uh, part of the the post production is Afonic, and Afonic sends the the MP3 over to a Mac Observer server, and then it lives it lives there. And then um, over on the actual website for Mac Observer, I create a post in WordPress for each episode. Here's what we talked about. Here's the links to the show notes, which is part of why you want to have your own website when you do stuff like this. And then um, that all gets published and, you know, chapter markers with the links to the relevant stories that we talked about or the, the thing that we were discussing that, you know, um, that all shows up as part of the file. And then um, my Westworld show is hosted at the incomparable. And that also um, each episode has its own web page and you can have your own links to show notes and things that we talked about and here was that weird thing that don and i ended up discussing for 15 minutes um there's a link to that too and then all of that moves over there and uh, i think one thing that um i feel like is a good thing to have is uh if you're gonna have a show is that you should have a site and um a you know in any fashion, um, you should have some sort of website that people can refer to because it's a lot easier to point somebody at a website sometimes than it is to like Apple podcasts. Like what if you have an Android phone, you can't really easily get to Apple podcasts and you know, all these different things. So it's nice to have a web page uh, in order to do that. And somebody gave me this rule like ages and ages and ages ago at a WordCamp event 
uh, somebody was talking about getting hosting set up for your website. And the thing that they said was the rule of thumb should be, he said, my own personal rule of thumb is the shrimp dinner rule. And if you're hosting a month costs less than you would feel comfortable paying for a shrimp dinner, then it's not enough money that you're paying for hosting. Really? (laughs) And I always went, that's kind of a, that's like, that's a much better yardstick than I thought it would be. Even after all these years, it's still a pretty good rule. Like, would you pay like whatever you're paying for hosting? Would you pay that for a shrimp dinner? God, no, you know, then maybe you need a little nicer hosting plan or a, a slightly different host or something like that. So I always think that that's, um, a good rule of thumb, especially like for getting started. Um, particularly because I know that you can get good deals on like prefab website sorts of things. And that's great. Like if you want to use Squarespace or Weebly or um, I think GoDaddy has a similar tool. Like if you want to do something like that, that's great. But immediately you're going to come up against something that you want to do that would be possible if you weren't using, if you weren't constrained by whatever, Right. Uh, content management that that particular place is doing. Like if you've ever tried to build a site on Squarespace and you know enough about HTML to be dangerous with it, um, it can be really hard to try and do anything on Squarespace. So, you know, I want it to look this way or I'm trying to do this other thing or, um, you know, getting the the podcast to show up on the, on the page reliably how you want it. That's why like it's nice to have a place like Libsyn or um, who's the other one? Like Blueberry, I think is the other. Yeah. Yeah. that does that um, because they're meant to be a like a podcast that happens to have a website associated with it. And and that approach is really nice when you're getting started. I'll also hit uh, Chuck. You, you also do it too, is you, you talked about feeds. Um, you really got to go to other feeds, Google podcasts. You got to do that for sure. Even though, even if it's Apple centric, Google podcasts, I, mean, I, I made sure our, our show is on there um, and uh, Stitcher and uh uh, Spotify and tune in tune, tune, uh, yeah, tune in radio yep. uh, just to name a few SoundCloud I know you use that truck and and just you just got to get your podcast out there um, radio public is another one I've 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 I've, I've uh, started uh, taking a look at uh, there it's just something new I just kind of fell fell across it and they they put your uh, podcast up on a page and, and it's got paid things on which I didn't bother with but uh but there I mean you got to get your podcast out there beyond just Apple podcasts but again like I said at the beginning uh, the Apple podcasts is yeah that's that's number one yeah. one one other cautionary uh piece of in, of information um the hosting services I mean they these are places that are, that are designed to host podcasts right. and that means they will give you or tell you either unlimited bandwidth or how much bandwidth you get. Um, if you try to host your podcast on one of these website services, that can be a whole different thing. You, you have to consider the mm-hmm. fact that, um, number one, the bandwidth for the show that you're publishing today. Okay, how much bandwidth is that going to take? How much space is that going to take on the website? Um, especially if you decide that you want to keep archives up for an extended period of time and have people give people access to those archives. If you're going to publish, you know, five shows in a month and you're going to keep three or four months of shows online, that may not be a big consideration. If you start thinking about two, three, four, five years worth of shows, then and you may or may never not get there, but it's better to plan ahead a little bit. So, you know, don't necessarily cheap out. Some things you can cheap out. That's not a place to cheap out because if you do, you may find yourself having to go back and do a lot of rework to make some of, sure some of those shows are online. Um, I had that situation with um, something when I started doing video called Blip TV. Um, they were now YouTube was in its very early infancy and, you know, it was not a place that necessarily was welcoming. That's not fair. It just wasn't really thought of for podcasts, video podcasts or otherwise. Um, Blip TV was, and I had a great run, but when they shut down, suddenly I had multiple years worth of content that I had to find a home for or just have it go offline. So if you go on YouTube now, you will find the Mac Voices feed, the, the video uh, page that you're familiar with. But if you f- f- search for Mac Voices Legacy, you'll find a whole different feed that really is not active anymore. And the page is there, but it's to make sure that content remains online. 
but you know, I had I had to do that, and because uh, YouTube will not allow you to rearrange things, it's not like I could up to upload a, a file from uh, you know five years ago and then say, "Hey, I want this down at the bottom." No, it sticks it right there at the top. So those are some of the things that you have to have to have to deal with. Now, some of this has gotten a lot easier because there were not services available at that time to do a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But it is it is stuff you have to think about. Um, okay. So the one other thing, as we wrap up here, um, I wanted to make sure, cause I, we've covered equipment, we've stayed away from monetization, um, all those other things is promotion mm-hmm. because unfortunately the, the, the world is now such that you can't just, uh, start a podcast and figure that everyone will find you automatically. So, you know, you, you, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have a whole lot of different social networks, micro.blog, Mastodon, um, you have Instagram, uh, you know, I mean, you can go on and on. So you have to figure out a way to promote your shows. Mm -hmm. So Kelly, I'll start with you this time. In in some ways, you're sort of, you have an automatic built-in promotion with uh, TDO um, because of the Mac Observer. But how about uh, for the Westworld podcast? How do you promote it? Well, a certain amount comes through um, Incomparable because it's an Incomparable Network show. So um, some of that comes because there's some auto, almost said autobots. Uh, there's autobots that post uh, things to Twitter and and show up, and then it goes out as part of the TV feed on Incomparable. So you can you can subscribe just to our show, or you can subscribe to like all the TV and get all of it. And if you're just getting that, then one of the shows that pops up for you is our Westworld show. Um, I do promotion on Twitter. Don does promotion on Twitter. Um, Each of us have pretty diverse audiences for various reasons. Like uh, primarily one thing that Don works on now is uh, video transcoding. So he writes uh, stuff that makes it so your computer can convert video from one thing into another thing. I don't quite understand how all of it works. He's explained it to me and I use his tools, but I don't quite know all of them. So he has like the video people who talk to him. And then he also was a person who, who was heavily involved in WebKit, which is the, the technology that powers Safari. So lots of web people and lots of Apple people are people who are his audience. And then I have like a completely separate audience through other stuff that I've been involved with over the years. And so between the two of us, like just putting it out as a Twitter, as a, a Twitter thing uh, ourselves on our own Twitter accounts is, gets a certain amount of attention. Um, I also have like mentioned it to people in person. Um, I know that uh, when I was at, when I was at MacStack with both of you earlier this year, uh, people came up and wanted to talk to me about Westworld. And that was actually really fun because it's the first time I've had like live interaction um, with people about a show that I did, which I thought was really great. Um, So like primarily it's Twitter. There's a certain amount that happens on Facebook. Um, The, um, the daily observation stuff always goes out on the Mac observer page. And if anybody's following the Mac observer page, it shows up just like any other news article that goes up on Mac observer. Um, you just see that daily observations is up now. And, um, occasionally we will tell people like during the show, um, please go leave a review on iTunes. Uh, it does because the, the number of reviews also helps pop that up for other people. And so, you know, I'm subscribed to these five Apple podcasts and one of them is daily observations. So, you know, if other people are subscribed to four of those, then at the bottom, you know, recommended if you like will be daily observations, but only if we're getting reviews and, and people are, are paying attention to leave that kind of feedback. So, um, and I know there's one more that does its own review system. That's not iTunes. And I can't think of it if it's like Stitcher or overcast or something, but one of them, has like its own sort of like you can and you can get recommendations from other people uh, like that you follow. One of them, you can hook up like a Twitter account to it or something. And like other people who have done the same thing, you can see what other podcasts they're listening to. So um, a lot of it is just sort of social recommendation. Um, I do for the Westworld show, we do have a separate Twitter account for that. And all of the shows go out on that feed and that feed. Otherwise that feed has pretty limited interaction, which I think helps it in the way that, in a way that um, 
it's not generating a lot of other noise and doing a lot of other interacting. Like if you want to talk to Don and I about what we said on the show, you can just at Don or I on Twitter, for example. Um, so having just that feed, I think that helps and then people can can follow that and it's not going to be a bunch of, of additional traffic in any way. Um, and then, you know, a lot of it is just sort of um, if it's interesting to people and you are consistent with your schedule, whatever that is, even if it's once a month, um, it will be, it will not be too complicated to find your audience, especially if you have one already in some way. A lot of people come to your website all the time, or a lot of people are showing up in your Facebook page, or you have just a lot of interaction in the community that is the community you're going to podcast about. Like, you know, David probably gets a lot of opportunities to talk to people about the horse racing one because he spends time with other people who are interested in horse racing and is in that is is a member of that community. Right. And that makes it pretty easy to sort of tell people, um, you know, especially if you're not obvious about it. Like I've just been doing podcasts for so long that I tend to, it, it tends to creep into conversation no matter what. So yeah, on that podcast I do, you know, we just talked about that the other day, you know, whatever it was. And, uh, you know, sometimes you get an opportunity to talk to people about that. And I've had people that have said like in real life been really interested. Um, well, what, is it hard to start a podcast, you know, and asking all the kinds of questions that we're talking about now. So, um, I'm actually sort of excited to have a podcast to refer people to if they want to start a podcast because, because Chuck, you're, you're setting this up so that people can get started and, and do something interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and and just to be clear here, I, we we want to give you some things to think about. We're not necessarily setting you up with a formula. I, in some ways, it would be easier if we just said, "Hey, this is it: one, two, three, four, five. But there's so many great options out there, and what's right for me may not be right for you. What worked for David doesn't necessarily work for Kelly, and vice versa. So mm-hmm. you know, th- you already that. heard that David pointed out audacity, and I'm like, oh, that's right. I'm allergic <laughs> to audacity. Like we don't get yeah. along. <laughs> right. And there, and David, well, you both mentioned Simplecast. And frankly, I was not even aware of Simplecast. I've got to go and check it out. Yeah. So, yeah. David, how about you? Uh, I mean, you came in as an Apple podcaster. You sort of had to have a built-in audience to some, in some, to some degree. But they right. also have to find you. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about uh, Lipson, too, is it allows you to a- automatically set your feeds to the different services. So I don't have to spend all this time going to every service to do it. Mm-hmm. So once once an episode gets published, it goes out to Facebook. It goes out to Google Play Music. And uh, uh, the one we haven't mentioned is LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is not is, is more of a business yeah. sort of related uh, uh, business related service. But I, I have uh, in touch uh, linked, linked to LinkedIn. And as well as I know you do too, Chuck is uh, is uh, and it works pretty well. As I do get a lot of likes from from people who are following me on LinkedIn, so that's another service to consider. Um, I got the podcast podcast page, which should be my website, um, and then uh, Spotify. I have a feed to go to them. Uh, Twitter is is uh, on this ep- on in touch is uh, I'm not too I don't have a lot of followers, but uh, I haven't been as active with that. But on the horse racing one, I we we find that Twitter is 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 a good engagement, even though there's a lot of crazy people on Twitter sometimes, but uh, Twitter does seem to work. Okay. And I noticed you, you've set up the feed for, for, um, uh, uh, Instagram. And, uh, and I think Instagram is a, is a, is a great uh, way to do it because Instagram has become super popular. People are just kind of like the, the boycotting of Facebook, even though Facebook owns Instagram, but <laughs> I, I see, I see the engagement on, 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 on Instagram more and more with, with people. So mm-hmm. um, I, I think that's, uh, I think that's uh, another a good way of getting out there. Um, and, then, and then YouTube is another one. I mean, I'm, I'm publishing all of the audio of, of, of In Touch with iOS on, on YouTube. So, um, so people can find it. I'm getting people liking it and people, and it's, it's on my personal page, but that's okay. I've been engaging with that too and it's not video so uh but so you just see my link and you can be on youtube and listen to it and and, and i know youtube is getting really into uh, doing a lot of audio stuff uh just getting it out there so mm-hmm. um just just engage on there and and then you gotta have a website and then and like you mentioned with simplecast simplecast you're gonna be found on google pretty quick but uh the most important i believe is is in the itunes store and and yes. being listed there and yeah getting comments and, and getting people to 
to find you because once you're listed in the on on on, on the podcast uh, list on the inter, on the iTunes store, I, you're you're in good shape because uh, that's where you're going to get the majority and, of the traffic. And that doesn't cost anything. I want to make sure no, people it's know, free, like, absolutely getting, free. Getting yeah. getting listed all these places, it costs you the time it takes to fill out the web form that says right. like I'm submitting this thing to this thing, and that's it. Like all it costs you is is the time to do that, and just making sure that you have. Uh, you know, wherever it is your feed is being hosted and, and you're posting all that audio, make sure you've got that nailed down and that's ready to go. And then you're going to be able to point that feed at all these other services. And it just is a matter of what's the name of the show? You know, what's the description of it? Here's this kind of, you know, here's kind of the stuff that, that you need to know about it. And yeah, exactly. that part's not too, not too complicated. And then, you know, as you update things over time, you just sort of go back to each place and, and, you know, change the yeah. description a little bit or whatever, and you're good. And, that, and that's kind of what I did, even with the horse racing. I I just sat sat down one night and I said, you know, I want to start crawling. The, I mean, and that's how we learn about these things. You just Google, you learn. You, it, it's not something that you're just going to end up finding out by just it, just by automatic. You have to spend yeah. the time to to Google and 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 to research and understand these things. I I spent one night, one day. I uh, I just sat there and I Googled all the ways of being able to find. Uh, how you can get your pop podcast published and get it listed. And I mean, that's how yeah. I found it about Radio Public. I mean, there's another one called Pod Chaser, I think was was one of the other ones I, I played with. So there's there are some more obscure types of listings out there, but you know what? It'll, it'll get your name out there because mm-hmm. I can tell you what, on horse racing, it, it did build up a lot more followers on Twitter uh, because of okay, because of that, you know, we're and we're utilizing Twitter more, like I said, because I think we you'll see more interaction with that uh, when mm-hmm. it comes to, to horse racing. I think a lot of the horse racing industry uh, folks are on Twitter, so we follow them. And, and then yes, you get that's what you have to do with Twitter. I just that was the other thing I did while I was going through and finding all these other services is go on Twitter and just uh, and start following people that are in that are part of that industry. I mean, I just you know following and- trainers, following jockeys, following racetracks, follow, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I fo- I'm following, we're following 2,000 people or something like that. Yeah, and, and, and look but, who they follow and what their lists look like on Twitter. Oh That's like God, a I spend really hours. good way. Yeah. That's what you could do with so, Twitter. You go up for hours, you could yes. go through these people, and I just, I, oh, hey, that looks cool. Oh, well, I mean, and then. Uh, sort of, sort of, I know I got two thousand. I'm following two thousand people on our our feed. I got to do that within Touched iOS. I don't. I haven't done that. So yeah. I think that there's my um, there's my project for one day. <laughs> and that's the thing that I think also sort of gets lost, particularly because, uh, like at least for me anyway, like I've been at this for a long time and so people just sort of assume like i know all the things but like i didn't start knowing all the things just like with my computer just like with my phone like i didn't know anything and i just sat down and went i need to be able to do this how do i figure out how to you know how do i figure out how and started doing web searches and asking people that i know and you know using twitter as a resource for that just as much as i i use it for for broadcasting the stuff that i do now like getting started was like What's a good microphone? Um, right. Does it need to be USB? Like, could I use XLR and some sort of interface to hook it to my computer so that it's like a regular microphone, you know, but right. hooks into USB? How do I do this? Like, is this going to be good enough? Um, you know, why can people hear me type? Like, on and on and on. Like, I asked so many questions on Twitter and so many people were able to help me with that. And I do the same thing. Right. Um, like, if people are in my timeline asking me, and you can go on Twitter, you can ask me and I'll tell you. Like, this is the microphone I have. This is the the interface I use because I do have an XLR microphone, uh, so I can go either way if I want to. And here's you know here's the interface I have. Here's the way that I do that. Here's what I plug in. Here are the tools I use to edit. Like I don't feel like any of that's necessarily a secret. Like I will go. I will tell you at length how I make sure that the Westworld show gets out the door because yeah. Greetings from the Uncanny Valley is the one I put a lot of work in. That's one of the great things about the show that we do at daily observations is I don't, there's no edits. Yeah. I don't, so, I don't, and I don't unless somebody either. swears and right. I have to go in and drop something in, then I don't have any edits to do. So, uh, I play the music in line as we're all sitting there. We do a little music check and, uh, and, you know, like I make sure everybody can hear the music and then I'm done. Um, you know, I, that's part of the actual recording. And so then it's, it, it shows up as part of the show. And then the outro music at the end shows up as part of the show. And then I take that piece of audio. And as long as there's nothing 
catastrophically wrong with it for the most part. And it's pretty easy to tell if something went wrong that I'm going to have to work on later. Then um, I just take that and I process that whole thing beginning to end through Auphonic. Now I'm, I'm looking at doing the same thing with the Westworld show because mm-hmm. I do spend a bunch of time fiddling with the, the music at the beginning and the end. And I think maybe what I need to do is automate that a little bit so that I don't end up having to put it in all the time. So I think I'm just going to, um, create a couple of the intro music and the outro music, just create clips of those and uh, put that through as part of the show when we do it live. And then that way um, it's one less thing I have to do later and I don't have to worry about it anymore. And, you know, you also don't even have to have music. Like we didn't even have music on the first couple of episodes of the Westworld podcast. And, you know, we just started in greetings from the uncanny Valley. Here's what's up. Like, you know, I'm setting a timer. Let's do this. You know, whatever it was. Well, we didn't set a timer at the beginning. We started that. Mm-hmm. Too. But um, like, that's the thing. Like, um, I want to ask you, David, because I'm really curious mm-hmm. uh, what, sorry, Chuck, but I'm going to jump in here. Uh, what tools are you using to edit your shows? I'm just using uh, GarageBand right now. I've been, I've been okay with it. And again, uh, I, I do the same thing like you just mentioned. I, I don't do any edits. I just take the whole show. I do, I, and I do it with split. I, I do split the tracks. So I have, uh, uh, I had been using Skype and record using call recorder. So it doesn't uh-huh. split tracks, uh, but I want to still really dabble in um, and um, using audio hijack and, and learning a little more about that and, and how to record. You know, like we, when you were on my show last time, I tried doing that. And then I, that was, that was a, a train wreck. There. I crashed. <laughs> and we had to go back to, to call recorder. So, right. uh, but, but I, but I do the but split, tr- I do the split tracks yeah, I'm and learning and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah and then that's what I want to start. That's my next piece is, getting more into the the audio part of it and using the tools I've paid. You know, I bought Audio Hijack and I think it's great. I also just bought Loopback, which is another tool. Loopback allows, is great. Yeah, that they just came out with a new version. So I I, I drunk the Kool-Aid and, and bought it. So, uh, <laughs> and, and the the, uh, the the track itself, uh, and the tracks themselves, I mean, I've pretty much have left the show alone and I don't do a lot of over editing when I know something was bad and I, when I, when the show ends and then I'll go in and back like what, you know, what we, the truck's probably gonna do with this show. So, uh, but that's, uh, that's, what's cool about it. I just throw the two tracks into a, a preset, uh, 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 section in, in, uh, in garage band. And then I have a uh, music at the beginning and the music at the end and, and just move them. I move them up and down depending on the time and, and, uh, and, and it's fun. So guys, I don't even know what to say except thank you for all this wisdom. Um, we covered a lot of a lot of things. You know, I started I, I, I want, during the show. I said that Mac Voices goes as long as we need to cover the topic, and I'm going to break that rule because we could be here for four or five more hours. <laughs> um, but I, I hope that we maybe intrigued a few people, answered just a few questions, or got them to the point that they have questions to ask. And if they do, I know I've, they're more than welcome to contact me. I'm sure they're more than welcome to contact you both. Yep, absolutely. Um, so that's my way of segueing into saying, gee, Kelly, where do they contact you? <laughs> well, like I said, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, you should find me on micro.blog. I am Verso in both places, V-E-R-S-O. And you can also find me... Uh, on the Mac Observer Daily Observations podcast. You can find out about us there. And um, you can hear me on the Westworld show over at the Incomparable, which is called Greetings from the Uncanny Valley. And you can uh, generally, well, I mean, you can find me most places, but those are probably (laughs) the easiest. (laughs) Um, Like I said, uh, you know, Mike and I have a podcast and, you know, that shows up occasionally. So uh, you can hear me lots of places, but for actual interaction, I would say micro.blog first and then Twitter. And like I said, I'm Verso in both of those places. David, how about you? Uh, Chuck, you can find me on uh, on Twitter at DaveG65. Of course, uh, you find me at both my podcasts at InTouchWithIOS.com and OffTheChartsHorseRacing.com. And uh, reach out to me if anybody has any questions about uh, podcasting and uh, any technology for that matter. And uh, yeah, that's how you can hold me. Guys, thank you. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on and sharing some of your experiences, being willing to share them. And I know that... Uh, Everybody is is all. Everyone here is happy to share their their information with anyone who wants to ask. So thanks for doing this. We will do it again on another topic. Thank you. Thank you.
Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We will be back with more soon. If I can do anything for you, answer any of your questions, chuck at macvoices.com. And if not, until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.